Hi guys, Don Rice here, and <clears throat> it's time to play with the lathe. That is a piece of wren shape, and <clears throat> so it's roughly sort of 0 0.8753 inches square, except that it's more rectangular, and I have made a round end on it, except that that's not round. Uh, but I just need something that I can get into a three jaw chuck, you know, without too much trouble here. And something like that. Back some of this stuff away. And what I want to do is kind of get this inserted so it's, you know, not too wobbly. I'm go down just a little right there. See if that's a little better. Oh yeah, that's sure not better at all. Try that. This is like balancing a tire without the computer, the help from the computer. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's not like completely terrible. That that looks okay. And this is what happens when you do it all by eyeball. Oh, that's pretty good. Right there. Okay, so I will then this is called a live center. And so this little piece inside here it rotates, right? And um and I will just drive it into the end of the piece right there. Like that. Ah, wrong direction. Lock it into the chuck. Like that. And hopefully, yay, okay. <laughs> Cooking with gas. Uh, more speed. We'll go in quite a ways. Alright, now we're making chips. This is one I wish I had a motorized. Uh, I don't know what this is called, bed, moving, table, what, I don't know what it's called. I don't know any of the terms because I really don't know what I'm doing. So I'll go in one full turn, which is 50 thousandths, and I'll go back the other way. That's as fast as I can turn this thing. Here we go. All right, we'll go one full turn, which is 50 thousandths. Move it back the other way. Alright, we'll go one full turn, which is 50 thousandths, and then we'll go back the other way. So you can tell that the sound is changing, which means that we are cutting more and more with each pass, and I know that because it's still not a consistent sound that I haven't got an actual round blank yet but I know that we're getting close and I don't want to take off any more than necessary but you can see the flat spot here otherwise it's all round a little bit of flat spot there all round so it's this is the flat spot I've got to get rid of and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in I don't know half a turn you can still hear that tit -tit 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 sound so I need to take some more Still need to take some more. Still need to take some more. I want to get to where I'm just barely actually making a perfect circle, but you can see there's still a good sized flat spot there. So I still got to go in quite a ways. Yeah, so at this point, I will back off and I will go another full pass. Because um, I only like to go um, 50 thousandths per pass. I wasn't sure if 50 thousandths would have gotten me the full, would have gotten that flat spot yet. But no, no. I still got to go further to get rid of that flat spot. Hear that?
We're cutting a perfectly round cylinder right now. I kind of expect by the time we get out here, we'll hear it start to... There it goes. Ever so slightly. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but you, there's just a little bit of a flat spot left there. All right, so I'm going to be able to get rid of that with this next cut. All the way out here, I'm going to go in 25 thousandths. Just like that. Slow it down, make sure that is all gone. Boy, it is still not gone. Wow. Almost, though. Just a little bit more. Just like that. Another ten thousandths. Now we're clean. Now we're making a perfect cylinder. The biggest perfect cylinder that I could make with the blank that I am using. Therefore, this cylinder is exactly the size that I need it to be. Yeah. That's my story. Alright, I will back off. And I'm going to do some vacuuming and I'll bring you back in a minute. Alright. We'll bring this in. What I want to do is put an angle um, as far as I can on the end of this thing. So I'll bring it out here to where the point. Uh, can you see that? There. There we go. Just like that. And then I will drive this in. As far as I can. This is about right there. Alright. Is that the way this tool is supposed to be used? Probably not. But this isn't metal. It's wren shape. And so you could cut this kind of stuff. You could do shapings on this with fingernails if you wanted to. Um, okay, so once that's done, and where is it? There we go. That's a file. camera's kind of in my way. These are the sacrifices I make for you guys. I know some of you guys are going to notice that I screwed up and put a, a I marred it right there. Now you're right. And no, I'm not happy about it. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do about it yet, but I'll do something about it. I want to get all the way in there as close as I can to the center of this thing. I'm trying to make a round top, obviously, like that. Okay. This is uh, sort of like an emery board. Okay. And this is 400. Okay, just like that, be right back. Okay, so I just kept sanding this down a little bit with the 400. It makes the wren shape, which can have just a, you know, a very slight bit of um, uh, surface texture to it. Uh, it smooths it out considerably. And I mean, usually when I put a couple coats of primer on this and then sand it again with 400, this can be pretty, pretty darn smooth stuff and very, very light. And so 
uh, we're basically done with uh, the primary shaping here. So um, this one small task left to do. We will pop out the live center here. Here we go. And I will pop in um, a drill chuck like that. And this is a touch bigger than 332nd drill bit. I think this is 98 thousandths. And so 98 thousandths. I just want to put a, a hole right down the middle, just like that. That's all that it takes. And the purpose of that is that it'll allow me to um, uh, stick a post in there, glue a post in, upon which other things can be placed. Uh, okay, what am I doing? I'm done. So let's get it out of here. There we go. That is going to be either a fire extinguisher bottle or a, an oxygen bottle. Look, and then there were two. One is a little bit bigger than the other one. Um, why? Because uh, the fire extinguisher bottle um, was a little bit bigger around than the air than the air bottle. That's not really true, but that's probably a story I will tell. One is bigger than the other because it took more material to get this thing down to being perfectly round than it took for me to get this one perfectly round. That's all there is to that. Later. All right, guys. So <clears throat> here's one of the uh, uh, one of the things that's going to be an oxygen tank, and. Uh, I need to chuck it up into the lathe and so I can make this end look like that end. Uh, but I mean this stuff is soft. I'm not dealing with aluminum here. You know this is very very soft material. And so uh, what I do is this. Um, piece of uh, paper towel and um, some masking tape. And I'm going to wrap that really tight like a band-aid. Okay, just like that. And the purpose of that, of course, is to protect this soft, foamy-like material from the chucks. And so... That's the goal there, and I will just very lightly chuck it in there, and um, I will now goof around for a little while. I can see that it's off, you know, it wobbles a little bit. That's good, I made it worse. One of the things that you can try and do um, is find uh, something that you might be able to use as a try and center center it up. That right there is very close to perfect. Okay, so um, I should have been more prepared. Let's see what happens if I put a live center in this. So let's get this thing locked down. Lock down the tailstock. I can drive the live center into it. Let's make sure we're still pretty well centered. I will close the chucks. I'm just going to close them by hand. I'm not going to get the pins out and 
you know really ratchet this thing down because um, it doesn't take a lot of you know I don't have to hold it as strongly as I would if this was metal so I will drive the live center in all right so now I'm holding the thing from both ends okay so I just I changed out the, the, the tool holder and put my cutoff tool thingy in there. And I want this bottle to be, I don't know, roughly two and a half inches long, which means, yeah, you know, roughly right there, uh, sort of. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is when you put the when you're using a cutoff tool like this um, it, it puts you know weird stresses on the parts and i've had parts you know just bind up and then go <clears throat> in the tool so i'm going to move this in very slowly because I, I just really don't want this part to go all uh get all dicked up on me and so I'm going to go in real slow, and I'm going to keep a hand. Can you see this? You can't see this. So, over here, there's a ONOFF switch right here, okay? And uh, so if this thing all starts to go pear-shaped, I want to be able to hit the on-off switch uh, as quickly as possible, and hopefully keep from doing any damage to the good part that I want to keep and what I'm doing is keeping a very close eye right on this horizon I'm looking actually down here at the um, at the case and I'm watching just a little bit of wobble that's in the part and if I see that wobble get worse that's usually an indicator that it's all going to get bound up and go foobar but I'm just gonna keep moving the cutoff tool in very slowly very carefully and once it actually breaks through I'll immediately turn this thing off Just like that, okay. Yay! All right, so next up, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the live center out, and I'm gonna put a a drill chuck in here, um, and this is uh, this is a, an appropriate drill bit for a 256 bolt um, and and what I what I'm thinking I'm gonna end up doing here is uh, the regulator and stuff that goes on top of an oxygen bottle I may end up uh, installing it using 256 thread uh, that I can thread into the bottle with epoxy and make a good solid bond that'll never break. That's the plan. All right, so uh, we run um, run a hole in there like that, and next thing I I'll take that back off, put the live center back on, and center into the part right there okay and just like I did before I'm gonna put I'm just gonna chamfer this edge again I'm gonna do this a little slower than I did the first time because I don't have the chuck very tight and I just can't afford to have the part come flying out of this thing one of the reasons that I'm using the live center is it keeps pressure applied from the right hand side of the part.
Okay, next I'm going to use a file just like I did on the other end. Until I make a round shape that is pleasing to my eye and looks to me to replicate the look of you know an oxygen bottle. Okay, and then uh, just to kind uh, you know, I'm gonna call it polishing, um, but it does smooth out the surface. This is, uh, I think, this is 400 grit. Okay, just like that. And uh, because I put it in so loosely, you know, I can just re remove it by hand, just like that. All right. Okay, so I'm back on the bench here. And we will remove this and just see if we did any damage with the chucks. And honestly, that looks perfect. It doesn't look like we did any damage at all. I'm going to shoot some primer on this. Okay, so you guys that have you know seen me do this kind of stuff before, this is um, this is denatured alcohol, just in a Home Depot spray bottle, and uh, spray some into a rag, and then. I will do this, which cleans my fingertips, and it cleans the part at the same time. And uh, in this way, you know, the thing is, is using the lathe and the upright machines and, uh, you know, metal turning machining tools, they all need to be oiled on a pretty regular basis. And then you go and try and make parts like this, and you can get oil on them, and, well, it's just not compatible. So. Uh, you want to make sure you clean them real good before you shoot paint on them. All right, so kind of like a roasted uh, roasted hot dog. This is uh, a shot, uh, one coat of primer on here, and um, and it really shows the grain of uh, of the this material. And I, I mean, I don't know if you can see it or not, um, but you can see some grain in there. And honestly. That would look fine from two feet away. Uh, you know, up close, just a few inches, you can start seeing the grain. Um, even so, I'm going to spray a couple of coats on here, and then I'll sand it with 400 and, and see how it looks at that point. Um, but my, my goal is to make it look pretty smooth before I shoot some, col some color on here. So I'll bring you back later. All right, guys. Well, there they are. I have put a couple of coats of primer on them and then uh, sanded that out and another coat of primer and and then I have shot some paint on them so the one on the right is a zinc chromate green which to me looks more like an olive drab and the one on the left is yellow and so the one on the left will be uh, kind of a co2 fire bottle I don't know it goes down in the bottom of the left side of the Corsair cockpit and the green one will be an oxygen bottle that goes on the right side uh, right next to the pilot's chair so <clears throat> there you go